Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise today. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give God a little more energy than that. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Our praise is not predicated on what's happening on the outside. Doesn't matter what the weather is on the outside. We're thankful that God has allowed us an opportunity to come on the inside and to give him a praise and to give him worship today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, I want to remind you of some of the announcements today. You saw the announcement regarding our baptism. I know we haven't had baptism in a while, so I'm going to ask you to please sign up if you, you or your child um, uh, desires to be baptized. We want you to sign up for that. We're going to do that in October. We want you to be a part of that. I want to take a moment also to thank God for our media ministry. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for our media ministry. You know, it, 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 it prays, it, 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 it blesses God, and it's good to have saved folk and theologians working in your media ministry, because uh, uh, last Sunday I gave y'all the wrong uh, book. I was so excited to preach. I gave y'all John, and I was preaching for Matthew, but the media, <laughs> amen, amen. But I was, I, was, I was hungry to get it out, and I thank God. I thank God for our media ministry on today. Listen, I, I want to get right into the Word of God today. So if you have your iPhones, your iPads, you can turn with me. Old Testament book of Judges. Judges. We thank God for our cyber sanctuary. Those that are worshiping us online today, we thank God for you. Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, beginning at verse 11. Judges chapter 6, beginning at verse 11. 11. You have it? Say, I got it. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the turbinant tree, which is in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abyssalite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us, delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to him, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely, somebody say, Surely, surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat. The Midianites as one man. Can you say amen? amen. Today, today we're still in the series uh, titled The Divine Assignment. And family, this morning uh, I need you to embrace the eternal fact that you have a divine assignment on your life. I need you to say it with me this morning. Say, I believe, I believe that I that have a divine, divine assignment. That was good, but I want you to say it from your chest this time. Say, I believe, I believe that I have a divine, divine assignment. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise right there. Spirit of the living God, we come before you today and we dare not begin anything without acknowledging you as the head of all things. We come, Father God, because we know that there is a word from you for your people on today. Father, I can do nothing without you. But when the Holy Spirit stands up in me, and uses my body and my tongue to declare your word to your people, Father, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let today's message, Lord God, not just be a sermon, but let it be a message that your people hear, that they believe and that they become. 
Remind them through your priest word on today that they're here. You left them here in the earth realm for a reason and a purpose, and that is because there is a divine assignment on their life, an assignment that no one but them can fulfill. So, Father, we ask today that you would have your way in the midst of this service. Be God in this place today. We give you the praise and the glory. Let's do your holy name. And all the saints of God said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. As you take your seat, somebody shout divine assignment. Divine assignment. Hallelujah. We all have a divine assignment. Family, a divine assignment will require you to have divine insight, divine strategies, and divine guidance. Divine insight, divine strategies, and divine guidance. And you will need that so that you know what to do. You know how to do it, and you know when and where it is to be done. I need you to hear this this, this morning because you don't get to pick the assignment that you want while you ignore the assignment that you don't want. I believe that there are many people who are doing things because they can do it and not because they have been assigned to do it. And oftentimes, family, I need you to hear me, we don't get the results that we want because we're not operating in the assignment that God chose. But I need you to understand that we're living in a time more than at any other time in our lives that we have to lay on our face before God and ask Him, Lord God, why am I here? What is the assignment that you have on my life? There is something about finding your assignment, family, that gives you an inner peace because you're no longer competing with or intimidated by anybody else because you're simply fulfilling the purpose for which you have been custom made. God has created you to do something, family, that can't nobody do but you. Y yesterday I was watching an interview of Deion Sanders before their game uh, with Colorado State. And in that interview, they, 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 they asked him how he's dealing with the criticism from his critics that say that he's over the top, that say that he's a bit too much. How, how, how is he dealing with people that are not supporting him? And he said something that lets me know that I'm in the right vein today. He said, I'm not assigned to them. <laughs> yeah, if, 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 if I'm not assigned to you, you will never understand me. You, you, you see, you can walk in confidence when you know you're walking in your assignment. And, and see, whenever you're walking in confidence and then you're walking in success, hear me, you're going to make a lot of people uncomfortable. See, this is what happened with Saul when Saul was upset with David. See, he had no problem with David until the women start singing songs about David. Until they started saying that Saul had killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. Whenever you're operating in your assignment and you become successful, I need you to prepare yourself because people, not everybody is going to like it. Not, 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 not everybody is going to be happy for you. Not everybody is going to support you, but you must maintain your assignment. I need you to do that, family, because the attacks that are coming against you, hear me, they do not fit where you are. And that's because they are not intended for where you are. The enemy is not fighting you over what you've already accomplished. Are y'all hearing me? But the reason that the enemy has signed a warrant for your arrest is because he knows that there is a hidden treasure down on the inside of you. That if you ever begin to tap into that thing, and if you ever begin to operate in your assignment, you're going to turn his kingdom upside down. 
But I've come this morning to remind you that just like Job, God has counted you worthy to go through everything that you have gone through. And when you make it through this, you're going to be like David and declare, it was good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn his statutes. There, 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 is a, there is a cost to your assignment. Did you hear what I said? Assignment will cost you something. That there is a, there is a cost. And, and, and see, generally, we, we, we must go through some things in life before we can develop into what we ought to be. It takes time for you to know what you should let bother you and what you shouldn't. It takes time for you to understand what you should fight for and what you should walk away from. It takes time before you can truly declare that I'm walking by faith and not by sight. And so God will have us go through things. And when it is that you're going through things, oftentimes you don't even understand. And you will find yourself asking the question, Father, why me? Is there anybody in here that can be real with me today and say you've had times in your life where you look towards heaven and ask God, Father, why me? See, because when it is that God is preparing you for, for his assignment, he has to detox you of a lot of stuff that you've picked up on along the way. See, that... that there are three points to remember while on your assignment. I, I want you to write these points down. There's three points that I'm going to give you today that you have to remember while you're on your assignment. The first point is this. I need you to write this down. You must understand the reason for your assignment. It is critical that you understand the reason for your assignment. The, the raison d'etre. That word raison d'etre means the most important reason or purpose for someone or something's existence. I need you to get that. There is a reason for your existence. I want you to say it to me. Say, there is a reason for my existence. See, understanding the reason will help you stand in the best of times and stand in the worst of times. And the reason for your assignment, I need you to hear me this morning, it is never only just about you. As a matter of fact, I would venture to say that when you are operating in your assignment, you would discover that you're actually the tool and not the object. That God is using you to reach somebody. He's using you to minister to somebody. And this is why, family, you cannot allow anything or anybody to cause you to stop your pursuit of your assignment that is on your life. Let, 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 let me give you an example. Because when God has you on divine assignment, uh, Lewis, it's painful. It's a painful thing, but he's not letting you go through it just because of you. There is somebody that he has assigned to you. There is somebody that he has connected to you. There is somebody that he has put in the earth realm. And, and, and watch this. He has connected them to you. The only way that they're going to discover what they're supposed to be is if you walk in what you're supposed to be. Let, let, let me give you an example. Mark chapter 7. I need you to write that verse down. Mark chapter 7 beginning at verse 24. It says... From there he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and wanted no one to know it. See, see, well, watch this now. Jesus entered a house and he wanted no one to know he was in the house. But he could not be hidden. Verse 25, for a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him. And she came and fell at his feet. Then the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth. And she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. Let me pause right there for a moment. This woman was a Greek. She was a, a Syro-Phoenician woman. That, that means she was not a Jew. She had no rights to the blessing. She has no right to even be in his presence. And she understands that. And that's why the text is bringing it out. It says in verse 27, but Jesus said to her, watch the text, let the children be filled first. 
For it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Many of you would have lost your reason right there. <laughs> and she answered and said to him, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. God help me to teach it right. See, see, let, let, me, let, let me pause for a minute. Uh, media, I'm going to go back to verse 29, but let me pause for a moment. I need you to pictureize this. Here it is, this woman, and you must understand that in antiquity, women were, were not allowed to be in spaces like this. In, in antiquity, women were looked upon as property. So she was wrong for being in the presence. She's there in the presence, and not only is she a woman, she's a Greek woman. She's a Syrophoenician woman. She has no right to be in the presence, but her assignment has pulled her there. Jesus was in a place where he was not trying to be bothered. He was in the place where he was going to just minister to his disciples and tell them their assignment. But this woman, the Bible says, kept asking him to heal her daughter. And Jesus said, I can't give. Uh, the bread to the dogs. And she said, yeah, well, well yeah, yeah. I, right, Lord, I'm, I, I'm a dog. Yeah, I am. But even the dogs eat the crumbs. I'm not asking for the whole meal. I just need the crumbs. I'm not asking for a lot of your time. I just need the crumbs. I'm not asking you to give me a whole sermon. I just need the crumbs. Is there anybody in here that's ever been in so much pain that sometimes all you need is a word from the Lord. Verse 29 says, And then he said to her, For this saying, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. Not, not will be gone. Not, not shall be gone. He said, he said, has gone out of your daughter. And she came to her house. She found the demon gone out and her daughter lying on the bed. See, when your reason is above your feelings, because if you keep going about how you feel about it, you will never accomplish anything. But your reason has to be above your feelings. I don't care who talk about me. I don't care what you call me. I don't care what you say about me. You can sit there and roll your eyes until you fall asleep. But I have made up in my mind, I'm not going to leave this place until my assignment is fulfilled. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You have to have your mind made up that I'm not going to quit until I fulfill my assignment. I'm not going to quit until everything that God has placed me in the earth realm to do, even if I don't have support, even if don't nobody like me, even if I'm in a place where I'm the only one there, I'm not going to use that as an excuse not to finish my assignment. I'm going to do what it is God has put me in the earth realm to do. I need you to help me right here. I need you to look at somebody on your own and tell them, finish your assignment. Finish, finish. Watch this. Finish your assignment, and to finish it, you must know the reason. You must understand that when God placed you on assignment, it's not all about you. He's using you as a tool to reach somebody else. Second thing you have to do is you have to understand the responsibility of your assignment. I need you to write that down. The responsibility of your assignment. You must know the reason for your assignment, and you must understand the responsibility of your assignment. John 15 and 16 says, you did not choose me. <laughs> God, help me to teach it right. He says, you did not choose me. I love the Word of God. Yeah. See, some, see let, let me pause for a moment, because see, every time I get tired and I feel like I want to quit, and I start saying, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not going to go anymore. I'm not going to preach anymore. I'm not going to sing anymore. I'm not going to serve anymore. This verse here lets me know, you did not choose me. But I chose you. 
Here it is, and appointed you. I chose you for this divine appointment. I chose you and I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. God help me, I feel, whoo, I feel like it's not about you. It's not about you, it's about the fruit that I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get through you. It's not about you. You're going to be gone, but your fruit is going to remain. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not about you. He says, it's about what I'm going to pull out of you. You have a responsibility to finish what it is I place you on. Yeah, you might be tired. Yeah, see, th th this is why I don't understand how people can say, God called them to the ministry. God called me to preach and God called me to teach. And then you see them in Kroger and say, where you been? Well, I stopped preaching. I stopped teaching. Why? They made me mad. But they didn't call you. God says, I called you for this assignment and you have a responsibility to do what it is I created you to do and you don't get to lay down your responsibility because somebody hurt your feelings let me talk to this side over here you have a responsibility but we, 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 we have people that like to run away from responsibility have you ever, have you ever gone into a, um, a Costco's or a Sam's and, and, and you notice that they have the little booths set up around and they, they, they have the little samples? See, 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 sometimes God will give you just a little taste of what it is your assignment is going to be. He, he'll give you just a little taste of what the assignment's going to be. Have you ever gone into Sam's and you've seen them, they, they have just a little taste because they want to give you a little taste of the product uh, that, 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 that they're trying to sell you. But many people don't buy the product because they don't want the responsibility of the payment. So rather than buy the product, they keep going around to the sample. <laughs> yeah, they... Yeah, they, they keep going around to the samples. I'm, I'm guilty of that thing, too. I'm guilty of that thing, too. You change your jacket and change your hat and go right back through the line. Come on, come on. You go and you get, because you don't want the responsibility of paying for the whole thing. See, but, 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 but I've come to tell you today that you got to learn to be committed to your responsibility. See, the reason we want to get full of samples is because you don't have to be committed to anything you're sampling. Okay, let me, okay. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it on that side. Let me talk to this side. You ain't committed to nothing. You just keep on sampling. I, I wish I had somebody in here. You got to take the responsibility to be committed to this thing. I, 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 I don't know who that was for, but that's somebody. You have to understand that you have a responsibility for your assignment. And so you come to church Sunday after Sunday just to get a sample. Uh, I, I'm not going to commit to anything. I'm going to come Sunday after Sunday. I'm going to get a sample. I'm going to change clothes, I'm going to change hat, and I'm going to get a sample. And I'm going to keep coming to get samples until I get filled. But I've come to tell you that God is tired of you coming to church just to get a sample. You have an assignment on your life. So here it is. Here it is. Watch this. I'm almost where I'm going. Because you got to know the reason. You have to know the responsibility. And here's a critical piece. You have to know the relationships within your assignment. There are certain relationships within your assignment. If you think that you can accomplish your assignment by yourself, you're mistaken. If you don't need anybody's help to accomplish your vision, your vision is too small. And everybody, come here, everybody that started with you may not end with you. You have to learn to be okay with that. I'm asking God to bless you with the gift of goodbye. That you will learn how to say goodbye to some stuff, to some relationships that God is trying to move you away from. 
It's not that they are bad people. It's not that they did anything wrong, but they serve no purpose for your assignment. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so here it is. Here it is. You, 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 you got to know. You, you, you got to know. You, you got to stop crying about stuff that God has moved. See, there, there's some people that have left. You just got to let them go. Because if they were a part of your assignment, they couldn't leave. Oh, y'all don't like me this morning. Let me talk to this side. The, the relationships will either help you or hinder you in your assignment. And some of you would have been on your assignment a long time ago. I don't care if you don't like me, I got to tell you. Some of you would have been on your assignment a long time ago if you weren't in a wrong relationship, the wrong friendship. I wish I had somebody in here that would be honest with me today. First John chapter 2, 19 puts it like this. I'm almost where I'm going. First John chapter 2, 19 says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. <laughs> For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. So there's some folk that you started out with in relationship that you won't end with in relationship, but that's okay. Because at the end of the day, God is not going to judge you on your relationship. He's going to judge you on your assignment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And some of you think you're losing people, but you're not losing people. God is revealing. <laughs> because, because association brings on assimilation. You become like those that you are around. And this is why you have to be careful. Come here. You have to be careful who you let in the inner circle. Because the enemy will use anybody to keep you from your assignment. Pastor, you don't understand. We're in the same fraternity. We're in the same sorority. We wear the same colors. We went to the same grade school together. I knew it from my high school. We grew up. Our mamas went to church together. Our granddaddies helped build that church. It don't mean that they still connected to you. That there was a Mary, 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 Mary. Mary was what was given the responsibility uh, to carry Jesus, baby Jesus. Yeah, she, she was a virgin about to get married. And then the angel of the Lord appears to her and tells her, you have been chosen for the divine assignment of carrying the seed called Emmanuel. So now here she is carrying the seed. When you are chosen by God, and you're carrying something special from him, you cannot afford to hang around just anybody. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? What do you do when God has called you to an assignment that other folk can't relate to? <laughs> what do you do when God has called you to do something, to be something, to build something, to start something, and you have nobody you can talk to about it? This is why, I'm, I'm going to get back to my text, but this is why Mary ran to find Elizabeth. See, Mary and Elizabeth, they had nothing in common. They were cousins, distant cousins, but they had nothing in common. Elizabeth was an old woman who was barren, and God blessed her. Mary was a young girl. The only thing they had in common was they both were carrying something from God. And they both were on a divine assignment. Come here, let me talk to you. The person that you are running to, are they carrying anything? Pause. Selah. Think about that. Are they carrying anything? Or are you just so enamored by them that you've invited them to help you carry on?
Uh, all my amens gone. Uh. Because I'm, I'm almost where I'm going. I promise you, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Here it is. Because see, God has caused, and you must understand, in these relationships, God may send you, he may connect you with some people that don't look like you, don't talk like you, don't eat what you eat, don't like what you like. But you still got to connect with them if God has placed you with them. See, God has called us to be the salt of the earth. Yes, yes, yes. But a salt, salt is no good if it's just around other salt. <laughs> what you saying, Pastor Luke? We just want to shout around other Christians. We just want to talk about God around other Christians. But God sent you to that job because you the salt. God sent you to that gym not to pick nobody up, but because you are the soul. Uh, I need about 23 folk to say amen in here. Amen. Footnote, footnote, footnote. Let me, let me warn folk because when you are connected to somebody who's on divine assignment, you must understand that the stuff that hit them is going to hit you. See, 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 I can tell. I can tell if we connected or not. I can tell if we connected. Because if you connected to me and I'm going through all hell and ain't nothing happening in your life, everything is all good, you ain't going through nothing, ain't nobody, all your kids just making straight A's, you and your wife, y'all doing good, y'all taking trip, and I'm catching hell, something's wrong with this connection. Y'all don't want to hear me today. Yeah, because cause now you got to go call some folk and tell them this relationship is no longer needed in this season. <laughs> because you have to understand who it is you're in relationship with. Let me get to my text and we're going to go home. Gideon was hiding in the wine press. God showed up, Brother Glenn, and called him a mighty man of valor. Picture this with me. He's hiding because he's building something. He's getting his food together, and he don't want the Midianites to come in and raid him and take everything that he's been built. So he's hiding in the place. He's hiding in a cave. God shows up to him in the cave, looks at him, and says, you mighty man of valor. What do you do? When God calls you something that don't fit your current situation. God looked at him and called him a mighty man of valor. God didn't call him by his situation. God called him by his assignment. And I've come to tell you that I don't know what it is you're battling with. I don't know, I don't know what it is you're fighting against. I don't know what it is you're hiding from. But the reason God won't let you go is because God knows that he's placed something valuable down on the inside of you. God knows that when you ever take hold of your assignment, he's going to use you to deliver many people. He says, you, 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 you're a mighty man of valor. Gideon was a mighty man of valor, and he didn't even know it. He didn't even realize it. And the key to knowing what to do is first discovering who you are. Are you hearing me? Self-discovery, family, is the pathway that leads to assignment. You can't go to assignment if you don't know who you are. This is why you got to lay before God first. You got to let God show you who you are because the world has identified you as one thing and God said that is not who you are. Your parents may have even called you one thing, but God said that is not who you are. So you got to lay before God so he can give you your identity. God had to first remind Gideon of his identity before he could introduce him to his assignment. And I've come today to let you know that some of the struggles and pain you've been going through is because God is trying to get you to see who you really are. Some of the tears you've been crying have not been about the situation. It's been about your position. God is trying to get you in the right position 
Instead of you praying about the problem, you ought to pray about God's plan. God, what do you want? What is the plan that you have for my life? Why am I here? Why am I thus? Why am I going through this? Why is the pain so heavy? Why do I cry myself to sleep? Why did the sickness hit my body? God says, I'm trying to introduce you to yourself. So I can get you on a sign. And I'm done. I'm, I'm done. But watch this. Watch this. I don't want you to have to go through pain, to have to go through turmoil, to have to go through brokenness, to have to go through sickness, to have to go through loss before you discover who you are. God has not changed his mind about what it is he's called you to be and what it is he's assigned you to do. Because what God has called you to do, it don't leave just because your heart got broken. It doesn't leave just because you discovered you had cancer. It doesn't leave just because your spouse left you. It don't leave because you lost a loved one. God said, my assignment is still there. When you, when you discover who you are, part of the people that are with you is because they're with you for who they think you are. And all you got to do is walk in your assignment. They'll leave. The only reason, the only reason they're still there is because of who they think you are. But when you discover what it is you are called to do, they'll pack up their bags and they will leave. I'm done. I'm out of time. Listen. The most important, not dramatic, not charismatic, the most important message that I've ever preached Mr. Cameron, is this series right here. I hope you're not listening to this for entertainment. What's more important to me than anything else? People joining the church and this happening. What's important to me is that you walk in your sight. I need you in your sight. Your neighbor needs you in your sight. God needs you in your assignment. The world needs you to be on point in your assignment. Once you walk in there, it's freedom. <laughs> it's peace. It don't mean the enemy is not going to try to come. He's not going to try to, he, he's going to, the weapon's going to be formed, but it's not going to prosper. Why? Because you're on assignment. I want you to get this in your spirit. When you leave this place today, you get home, you get in your car, wherever you may be, I need you to do this. I need you to find a quiet place. I don't care if you're 99 or 9 years old. I need you to find a quiet place. And I need you to ask God, Father, why did you create me? Why did you save me? Why is it the sickness didn't kill me? People died from that. Why is it people in my own family are gone and they didn't do half the stuff I did and I'm still here? Why is it this person is spending life in jail and I did the same thing that they did, but I'm still here? What is it that you want me to do? Speak, Lord. I listen and shall obey. And I'm telling you, if you do that with a diligent heart, God will speak to you. He will let you know exactly what it is he created you to be. I'm telling, I'm telling you this not because I'm a preacher. I'm telling you this because I know for myself that when you get to that place where you truly seek him, he will let you know. And your water will be wetter. <laughs> Your sugar would be sweeter. Things would be better because you know what you're doing. You're doing it for the master. Stand to your feet all over the world. If you're standing in this place, and you are, first of all, you're not saved. Come here. 
This is the most important time of any sermon you've ever heard. This is, this is the most important time for any message, any YouTube message or whatever you, this, all that other stuff was for you. Now, this is when heaven begins to look to see what your response is going to be. If you are not saved, you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you've not come to a place where you say, Lord, I yield, I yield. I want you to come into my heart, into my mind. I want you to change me. He's made it so simple for us. Tradition and the world has tried to make it difficult, but he's made it simple. He's made it simple. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that he rose from the dead, you shall be saved. If you're standing in this place today and you know for yourself that if you were to leave this place today, if he were to call your number, you cannot say with 100% certainty that you would spend eternity with him. This is your time, family. This is your time to make that decision today. Repeat these words after me, Father. Thank you for keeping me all of my life. I know now that you have an assignment for my life. My first step is to accept you into my heart. Your word says, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Christ rose from the dead, that I would be saved. Today, that's my confession. That's my belief. And Father, if I ever missed it, if I ever gone the wrong way, you are faithful and just to forgive me, to save me, and to keep me. Thank you today for my new life, for my new walk, and for my new assignment. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise all over the building. Do me a favor before we dismiss. Do me a Turn to three people and say, I'm so glad to be on this assignment with you. I'm so glad. I'm so glad to be on this assignment together. Yeah, I'm so glad. Lift your hands all over the building as I command a blessing over you before you leave this place. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord our God cause his face to shine up on you. May the Lord our God establish you. And may he give you peace. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, family. We love you. We'll see you all next week. God bless you.